one of the greatest of all time in here, a true pioneer MC. He goes by the name of Grandmaster Cats. I remember Mr. Magic, Flash, Grandmaster Cats, LL, Raising Hell, but that didn't, didn't last. last. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Grandmaster exactly. Cass, welcome to the show, man. It's a true honor. I want to thank you for what you did for hip hop. You contributed greatly to the greatest genre of all time in music. Thank you. And continue to. Mm -hmm. What was your relationship with Tupac? Because he referenced you on old school. Yeah, well, Pac, um, uh, I'm not going to say like we was running buddies or nothing, but uh, it was a mutual respect there when I met Pac uh, when I was out of the West Coast, first with uh, Digital Underground and then later on when I was uh, with the Zulu Nation, West Coast, Africa Islam and and uh, Ice-T, the Rhyme Syndicate, um, that's when um, those guys were touring together and stuff like that. So we got cool. And like I said, there was a mutual respect every time we saw each other. One of the greatest of all time. Who would you say after you guys came, the pioneers, was the most important MC to the culture of hip hop? Because when we think of hip hop, most people run the Tupac. Do you feel as though that he is the image of hip hop in a way? Um, no, I can't say that. I mean, mm -hmm. Tupac came too much later in the game mm -hmm. to be um, the symbol for hip hop in, in any way. He definitely, if you categorize hip hop as um, um, get, uh, uh, activism or, or, or consciousness or, or, or even gangster, you know what I mean? He can he he fits definitely into those <laughs> three categories. You know what I mean, but overall, no, no. I think I think the landscape is too too wide to 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 just narrow it down to one person like that. I agree. I want to congratulate you on your radio show on Rock the Bells Radio with Shot Rock. Thank you. you can tune Thank in you. ten a.m. to one p.m. Monday through Friday. Yeah, yeah. Good look. Good look on LL's part. When did he reach out to you to start this radio show? Because he is a creative in a way, and he always gives back to the real hip hop. Well, a long time ago when L was um, going to start the radio station, he used um, one of my acapellas uh, to to open up the station like for, for a month. Like one of my rhymes r ran on a loop. Mm -hmm. um, like coming soon, Rock the Bells Radio. And then the rhyme would just come like, like and for a month straight. So I really opened up the station. Um, but when it was time for the station to really go, you know, um, get launched, you know, he was like, yo, I need old school tapes. I need, you know, this and that, because I'm going to keep it real, all the way real. I'm going all the way back. I'm like, yo, all that shit is cool. But, you know, I done sold so many old school tapes by now. You know, they on YouTube. <laughs> I mean, you don't need me for that. I said, but what you could do is give me a slot on the station. You know what I mean? And I was that was a couple of years ago. And he always said, you know, we're, we're formatted for now, but, you know, who knows, you know, moving down the line. And I guess we down the line because here I am, uh, me and Shy Rock, uh, that's the joint on Rock the Bells Radio. Mm -hmm. And you can tune into that Mondays through Fridays, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern time. I want to take it back to the beginning here of what was the first event that you were a part of in hip hop history, which you saw through your eyes, because you are a historian. Um, pretty much. I mean, uh, anybody who's a part of history, in a sense, and, and, and lives for any amount of time is a historian, but depending on how much of that information they retain, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? A lot of people were there or, or were around or witnessed this or that, but are you able to articulate that to someone else? And you know what I mean? So I guess in that sense, yeah, I am a historian. Um, but the first thing that I saw that showed that was hip hop was break dancing. Mm. When I first saw people break dancing, when I first saw somebody break dancing, I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Cause there was always music. That's right. You know, graph, there was always graph. You know what I mean? And uh, I mean, rap wasn't really prevalent yet, but when you see break dancing is like the symbol of hip hop. It's like if you see somebody on a the mic, they could be singing, they could be talking, they could be doing anything. If you see somebody, you know what I mean, doing any of the other elements. But if you see somebody spinning on the floor, that means break dancing. That means hip hop all day long. So really, that was my introduction to it. You remember your first party that you DJed? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Um, the first time I DJed at a party, it was in an apartment. Wow. And uh, that's the first time I smoked dust. <laughs> Word up. 
And somebody, somebody, you know, on the block was like, yo, Gary got that dust, yo, this and that. We was kids. Yeah, I mean, we was barely smoking weed. You know what I mean? But somebody got a joint of that, you know what I mean? Passed it around, took two puffs of that shit. I was gone. <laughs> and then went and DJed in a house party, you know what I mean? Um, my first official party that, like, you know, there was a flyer for and people came was at a pool room called the Eight Ball in the Bronx on University Avenue, um, not far from Sedgwick. And that's where I had my first official party, like first brought my equipment out somewhere and um, had an event. And then that's when your legacy began. This is when your journey in hip hop started. Pretty Force much. Five, Notorious Two, Cold Crutch. What came first? Because I believe it was, was it the Notorious Two? It, no, no, it was Casanova Fly and Disco Wiz. Okay, that's what came first. That's what came first. Because that was your original name. And as we all know, Rapper's Delight, Casanova Fly was mentioned on Rapper's Delight. Yeah, well, it was Casanova Fly. And then it was Casanova Fly and Disco Wiz. Okay. okay. All right. And then it was the Mighty Force. And then it was the Force Four. And then it was the Force Five. And then it was the Notorious Two. And then it was the Cold Crush Brothers. There we have it. So I have a series of reinventions throughout, you know, uh, my career and adaptations. Um early on and and just to keep it moving just to stay relevant you know you you know some of these things just stopped groups or stopped people you know from from progressing in hip-hop maybe uh they crew broke up or something and that was the end of them or, or maybe they had a kid or maybe a got a job and life caught up with them you know but i dedicated myself to hip-hop from jump street and i knew hook or crook this is what i'm gonna do for the rest of my life Cold Crush started in 1978, but you joined two years later in 1980. Yeah, Crush um, started coming about around 77, end of 70, 78. Uh, uh, the founder of Cold Crush, Tony Tone, um, used to be with the Brothers Disco, DJ Breakout Baron and the Funky Four. Um, uh, when he left them and started his own crew, he wanted to build a crew around a Puerto Rican DJ named Charlie Chase. Charlie Chase was one of the only Puerto Rican DJs playing hip hop. My Puerto Rican DJ that was down with me, Disco Wiz, prior to that had got locked up and went away. So the only other person, Hispanic DJ, really making noise on the hip hop scene in the streets was Charlie Chase. So Tone decided to build a group around them. Now, there were different variations of the, of, of the Cold Crush Brothers, just like it was di different variations of my crew until the, the lineup that the world knows was established because there was different people. Whipper Whip and Dada Rock was down with the Cold Crush um, for for a time um, after they left my my early Mighty Force crew and then landed with the Fantastic Five. So um, after uh, a few changes, personnel changes, um, after my Notorious Two stint with me and JDL, uh, we were recruited by uh, Chase and tone to uh, join the Cold Crush Brothers. And I was like, hey, why not? I mean, I don't have to carry equipment no more, bring no, you know, <laughs> <laughs> none of that. So uh, my job was just to get in and make the MCs competitive, you know, with, with the other crews that, uh, that were out at the time. Big Bank Hank, as we know, took your lyrics, Rapper's Delight. When did you first hear that record played and you, and you heard your lyrics on this? When he brought it to my house. Wow. He brought it to my house. That's some nerve. I can't believe he even would. I couldn't even look you in the face if I did that. I'm surprised he was able to it's, look you in the face. You got to understand. I mean, years later, when you see the results of it and what happened and all that, it's like, damn, that's fucked up. Yo, this and that, such and such. But all, that hadn't happened yet. None of those things had happened yet. There was no big success yet. There was no, you know what I mean? There was no royalties. There was no publishing. There was no money. There was nothing, none of that yet. It's just your man used your rhyme. You know what I mean? Yeah. Who knew? Who knew? Had I known, you know, Rapper's Delight would, you, you know, have the success it did and, the, the, you know, everything that came along with it later on, I wasn't conscientious at 19, at 18, 19. I was trying to be hip hop. You know, we didn't know the music business. We just knew the music. Exactly. It's it's a shame. And you didn't get paid a dime off of it. That's the thing that just no, that's no. the that's the biggest burner. Well, I'm 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 happy to be able to say that I was a part of 
the 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 first song that introduced the world to to rap music and hip hop. Um, not there's only a, a couple of people that could say that, mm -hmm. and I'm one of them. That's right. Okay, so whether it's known or unknown, that's a fact. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm glad for that. My lyrics were some of the first lyrics ever heard as far as rap music is concerned. Though other people were doing it prior to that. You know, the first time people heard it, the world heard it at large, they heard part of my, they heard my lyrics as well. So I'm, I'm glad part uh, about that part. Uh, about the rest of it, I mean, who knows how, how different my life would have been had uh, Hank did the manager thing he was supposed to do and just tell them about me. You know, and brought me to Jersey. I would have been. I probably would. I don't know if I would have went with it or not, but I might have been part of the Sugar Hill Gang. You know, <laughs> it would have been I mean, a lot because better. that was that they that was that's what they were digging. That was Hank's job. Hank was my manager. If he would have said, "Yo, I don't rap, but I manage Casanova Fly," you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That was the thing to do, but but it didn't happen that way. No, it didn't. And if you think about it, I believe that because of the rhymes that were used, you are hip hop's first ghostwriter, known ghostwriter. Yeah, unpaid ghostwriter as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, like I said, it was, it was um, hip hop was too early. It wasn't even about money back then, at that no. time. We were still striving for excellence. And uh, nobody knew that the record industry would take off or th that rap would take off the way it did. Um, so we probably would have made different decisions had we known that. Mm -hmm. and, and no one would have thought that it would have taken off the way it did. But can you believe how much of a business it's become where it's business over culture to the point where we know what hip hop is in the mainstream nowadays? We call it mumble rap. It's not the same. It doesn't take it back to the true form of hip hop. What is your take on how rap has just become more of a business instead of putting the culture first and actually applying skills? Uh, money doesn't come from culture, you know, directly. It comes from culture, you know, indirectly. Because um, everything comes from culture. And whatever we do, whatever we think first, whatever we do when we're young, the, the ideas, the slang, the, you know what I mean? The way we talk, the way we dress, all that influences um, uh, uh, first urban culture and then mainstream culture. I mean, look back throughout history. You already know that. Um, so... Did, did did we know we were we were gonna affect the world? You know, with the things that we were doing, and you know what I mean. Hell no! Did we know that we made, you know, the things that we wore iconic? You know, no, no, we had no fucking idea. Um, so I don't think there's as much heart and soul um in today's music because of the commercialism for one thing, and the fact that it is so business, and and it, and it's. It's more business than anything else. That's the problem. I mean, it becoming part of the business is was great for hip hop because it provided um, a uh, a way a way to feed your family. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? An uh, income. It's made it's made some some um, young black um, uh, artist millionaires. Yeah. Even you know what I mean? So. In a sense, it was good that way, but it took all the heart and soul out of it. I mean, in in the music industry, there's no rules. No, there's no you know. Okay, we you know if this happened, we're gonna be no fuck that. There's bottom lines, straight up and down. There's bottom line, and um, you no know, friends is you know what I mean. The record company's not your friend. You, you know, you, <laughs> all, all, all these different things you come to find out later on, and, and that's what's disheartening about it because it starts out so pure. I mean, most artists, I think, even today, even though they have a different agenda, because now it's all now it is about money. It's about the bag, you know what I mean, and all that. But when the intentions were pure, and you just sat in your room and you just wrote rhymes and 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 did that just 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 for the love and just for the satisfaction of doing it, that's that's the purity in it, and that's what gets lost sometimes um, once it goes commercial. Um, and that's I think that's where we are now. Yeah, for the most part, I'm not gonna say every. There's no artists out there anymore that that are pure or that are true to the craft or the culture, but predominantly, it's a business. Yeah. Oh, and you notice it on the radio stations, and just I, that's the thing that I can't understand because the records that you were making back in the day, and even records you, you hear from the '90s with rappers such as Big L, the rap these tracks aren't even making radio, and the records that are underground are way better than what's on the radio. Yeah, the radio um, songs pale in comparison to 
artists like Big L and, um, you know, Guru and, you know, those guys from that era that really defined hip hop, the production, you know, premiere and all of those guys. Um, and, and you're absolutely right. Uh, they, they label it underground because it's only underground because you pushing shit over it. That's the only reason why it's underground. It's not a lower quality of music or anything like that. It's just not what y'all are pushing first. When did you first recognize and see that the elements of hip hop were disappearing from music videos and just in certain aspects of hip hop over throughout the years, whether it be the late nineties and probably more so the two thousands when social media started to come about, when did you start to realize like th there's elements disappearing here? We're not getting the DJs as much as we used to in the spotlight, the graffiti, the break dancing. When did you start to see that things were starting to change? I mean, there were indications of it in the early eighties, you know, after, like I said, after, after it went commercial, I mean, it, it moved further away from, mm -hmm. um, the culture itself, um, the DJs became less important because, okay, now you're an artist. You have records now. So a DJ don't have to cut up records for you to rhyme. You could just put your record on. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. It was a different dynamic after that. Okay. And another thing that separated the culture was the fact that once you got signed to a record label, most DJs didn't sign. Most DJs, these guys were crews. They all came up together. They all came up in this business. But, but when it came to the record business, whoever's on the record is signing this contract right here. Okay, so that was the first rift that separated the DJ from his crew. Like, at the end of the day, we really don't need you no more. No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's another split that we ain't got to do. You know what I mean? And that was encouraged, I believe. That was encouraged. And then with the new technology, DAT machines and this and that, you can put your whole show on a DAT machine and go on stage. You don't need no DJ or nothing. No. So um, th th that decline started er early on in hip hop. I mean, I salute to people like Jam Master J you know, who who really reinvented the role of the DJ. Like, I'm the band, you know what I mean? We This ain't happening without me. I'm the music, you know? And then later on, uh, when the turntablist, you know, came back, that, that brought back the power of the DJ. But as far as a DJ in a crew that prior, you know, played a larger role prior to the recording era, yeah, that was the first thing that started dividing the culture. Insane. It's, it really is insane what we, what we have going on here today, but Thanks. just getting into, into more in the, into the DJ and in the aspects of the true hip hop culture versus, I think versus is starting to bring those elements back because you're getting the DJs back. You're getting true MCs because you were praising what Jada kids did on that stage, because that is what a real MC does. He takes over. He controls the crowd. I don't, I don't, um, at first, I, I wasn't too hot on the idea of the verses mm -hmm. <clears throat> because, of course, hip hop comes from that battle, you know what I mean, kind of tradition. But that was early on, you know what I mean, in our, in our, when we were trying to get attention, we were all vying for a, a spot, a place, or something like that. Um, but most artists who succeed, especially today, is because they rock with each other. They rock with art, other artists. The, uh, the the South won like that. The West won like that. You know what I mean? By everybody getting down together, uh, we were the last borough that to 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 try to you know do that. Uh, not the borough, the last city to try to do that. Like after the '90s, after we saw the West take you know pretty much take take the hip hop or, or the rap industry over for a while. Um, but that was lacking. That was missing. You know, that unity among groups uh, with us. And it started, uh, I mean, like I said, the first thing was, you know, the DJ missing out the thing. And then and then money came into play and then egos come into play. And then, you know, we, we're where we are today where um, it's just about, you know, getting notoriety, having notoriety today. I mean, that, that, that wins over everything. You ain't even got to be able to rap no motherfucking more. No. Just have enough followers you know what I mean? Enough views or something like that and uh, gain a level of notoriety and then they can make you into anything. Yeah. The rapper, thing that kills me. A rapper, you could be a comedian, be on TV, um, a, a, a model, 
um, a, 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 a what they call influencer. All you got to do is just have, a, you know, have people's attention. And people, then that's it. And it's a shame because I think we need to have more people like you get that front floor where people can listen to what you have to say because you had a big part in in the starting pioneering of hip hop and pushing the culture forward. I mean, true, but I'm only one voice, and I don't I don't tend to be the, the all to you know to 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 the you know I'm not everything. What I say ain't etched in stone. You know what no. I mean? I'm not the you know I'm not the overlord of hip hop. But I am a, a respected voice, and I have, um, like I said, I've been a part of this culture since its inception, and I've covered every element in hip hop. I did graffiti. I was a b boy. I'm a DJ and an MC. Okay, from then till now. Okay, I didn't dabble. I didn't jump in and out. You know what I mean? I've been dedicated to this culture ever since. So yeah, I am a voice, and uh, I, I use it. <clears throat> to to lead by example more so than trying to preach to everybody what's what you know what i mean i tell you what i know you know what i mean i tell you what i experience i tell you what i've seen and i know everybody in hip hop everybody in hip hop know me <clears throat> that's right you can you can you know my my resume is longer than train smoke you know what i'm saying you can you go on google me and sit down you better get you a cup of coffee you know what i mean cuz you're going to be there for a while Mm -hmm. So what I'm what I'm saying all this to say that, you know, my credentials say, yes, I, you know, I am that person, but I'm only one of those people. That's you right. know what I mean? I'm one of the people that's able to artic articulate it, you know what I mean, to other people. And that's why I have this platform now, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because like I said, a lot of people was there. But when they try to tell you, you know, it's usually their own you know, interpretation of everything. Everything was like what they think it is and where it was. And I don't tell uh, my story. I tell the story. You know what I mean? I just happen to play a big part of it and a little bit of everybody's story. Well said. And a much needed platform is we need to, to hear the history through your lens. And it's the history, not just from your lens. It's the story, as you just said. Facts. Who dropped the bag or who who even uh, more, more particular, who dropped the ball in making sure that we know the legends and we did it's from where you came from, from your generation, because a lot of hip hop fans may not know the entire history. When we think of, Oh, who's your top five, they run right to the nineties. How come we don't run back to the eighties and seventies? Who would you say drop the ball? Could it be the radio stations because they're not playing the records and, and making sure that they're, they're teaching the youth that hip hop didn't start here. It started way back. I think a lot of it has to do with the commercial lives the commercialization of, of, of hip hop. Once, once it became records and the industry got hold of it, <clears throat> they kind of took control of the narrative. So uh, when the, ch the styles changed because the record companies changed, okay, changed the way, you know, they changed the styles of music when they get ready. A certain kind of artist comes out, they, they got a hot sound or a hot, now music has to sound like that now. You know what I mean? So instead of artists being the ones who change, you know, and, and grow with the music, it's the companies who kind of dictate that. So from era to era, the reason why music sounds the way it does is not because of the artists, it's because of the record companies and the music that they decide to put out there. <clears throat> Do you remember the 80s when um, they call the golden era of hip hop, uh, mm -hmm. mid 80s to the late 80s? That's okay, right. Maybe early 90s. Um, when you had a, a variety of hip hop, you had so many different kinds of hip hop. You had groups, you had uh, solo artists, you had funny um, MCs, you had um, 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 sex sex symbol, you know, sort of MCs. You had a uh, female MC solo and groups. You know what I mean? You right. had conscious MCs. You had all this to choose from, all this to choose from. A smorgasbord of hip hop. If you didn't like one thing, there was something else great about it. And then it got too conscious. Mm. It got too conscious. People start learning shit. And then, <laughs> you know what I mean? KRS start talking about, you know what I mean? Harriet Tubman and, you know what I mean? And Benjamin Banneker. And, you know, and, and we start getting some pride about ourselves. Some, you know what I mean? And uh, we start wearing medallions instead of gold chains. You know what I mean? And it was like, wait, hold up. It was like somebody said, wait, hold up. This shit ain't, this ain't rocking. And then when Public Enemy came, it was like, uh-uh, 
Uh uh-uh. uh. No. <laughs> Uh uh-uh. uh. Can't have nah, that. This shit can't. Nah, we can't have this shit, man. We can't have this shit. Yo, let's get some cocaine and some crack talk in here. Let's get some, you know what I mean? Some gangster. Let's sign that gangster shit, man. You know what I mean? Let's get that gangster conversation going on in hip hop. And then after a while, you couldn't, nigga, if you had a. If you had a red, black, and green medallion, you couldn't walk into a goddamn record company. You, know <laughs> you couldn't get a meeting with, with with nobody talking that conscious shit after that. You know what oh. I mean? So it's not like there weren't art, there weren't conscious artists. It was like the labels, like yo, fuck that shit. We ain't trying to push that. And and it's been shown, you know, throughout the throughout the years and in the industry, you know how they manipulate um, the narrative. Of, of not only hip hop, but just music in general. Mm-hmm. You mentioned KRS one before you, you took notice of who was putting on for the Bronx representing the Bronx because you're from the Bronx, of course. When did you first meet KRS? I met KRS pro- after the South Bronx. I think when he was doing the South Bronx because he was on a, a label called B-Boy Records, mm-hmm. you know, a little, you know, dinky record, you know, label in the Bronx, somewhere in the Bronx by us. And uh, uh, I knew an artist on that label, matter of fact, one of my son's moms was on that, later became one of my son's mom was on that label and uh kg uh from the cold crush brothers also had a solo deal on b-boy records so that's where i met um chris he's he carried that torch on from you guys like a champion he really did one of the greatest my philosophy we can go on and on about his discography yeah yeah 25 albums i mean yeah. who, who who does that you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck does that? Not and, not too uh, many. No, no. And mostly, you know, a lot of them independently. A hundred percent. You know, I want to so. get into GMC Entertainment because you are the CEO of your own entertainment company. Tell me about creating this important company for yourself. Well, basically, it's you know, it was um I reached a point where, you know, I'm way behind as far as, you know, what I should be and where I should be, you know, in this business. Um I had a 10 year stint, you know, where I was just fucking out of it. You know what I mean? I wasn't involved. I wasn't doing um, anything and I wasn't doing anything to further my, you know, it, it was like, we're out of it. it you know, it, 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 if you were around at the time when, when this shit happened, it was like, there was like a cutoff point and you know what I mean? And it wasn't a line, it wasn't a visible line, but it was like a feeling. It's like, you felt like this is it. We're over. Our time is over. Our t- all indications was saying that shit, you know, all, our times is over. So, you know, f- it was a lull. It was a 10 year lull with no involvement in the industry at all. You know, I kept my pen sharp, you know, at all times, but no real involvement, you know, half hearted records, solo records, you know what I mean? But no, no, no real involvement, you know, until later, until after, you know what I mean? I came back from LA um, and, you know, I think 95 was when I really, you know, got a fucking a torch lit under me and just started getting back to myself. And then, you know, so I knew I had to do something business wise. So every time, you know, money is coming in, it's coming in to me. And it's like, it's not, I'm not a, I'm, I'm not a business, man. I'm a business yeah. man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like Jay-Z said, I am a business. So I had to, you know, start a business, you know, put, put my name, fuck a LLC. I'm a corporation. You understand what I'm saying? Because that's what people respect. Um, no disrespect to people with LLCs. But like I said, I got a corp and GMC Entertainment Incorporated um, is my business entity. And uh, basically, it's uh, it's my business entity. But any business that I do, you know what I mean, related to to me, I, it, it's GMC Entertainment. Um, I don't have artists. You know, people like, yo, people send me music all the time. Artists are like, yo, I need management. This and that's like, yo, <laughs> no, it's not that kind of party, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be responsible for somebody else's career. No, I wouldn't. You know, I'm not in a position to put, you know, to do that to an artist. I'm an artist myself. I never really had no real management. Because nobody, you can't get into an office that I can get into by myself. What I need you for? If I can't, if, I can call exactly. Russell on the phone right now. I can call Russell Simmons on the phone. You're gonna pick up. You can't even get him on the phone. So what are you gonna do for me? Exactly. Preach. Yeah, you're preaching to the choir here. It's, you know, it's important. Your your pen game is much. It's it's only grew from when you first started rolling a hundred deep with DJ K Slay. You hooked up with K Slay recently. 
Yeah, well, me and Kay, we got a long relationship, you know what I mean? When You know, Kay is, is a legendary graffiti artist, mm -hmm. um, Dez, and um, he was featured in the first movie about hip-hop, uh, the documentary about hip-hop, Style Wars. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of the first images that you see, a lot of the uh, popular images, iconic images that you see of DJs, first DJs, it's a picture, he's in it. It's a wow. picture of him. Uh, so salute to my man K Slay. So um, you know he was a mixtape DJ as well. So when mm -hmm. he started doing his mixtapes and doing features on mixtapes, he called me um, back in the day when he first came home. Like yo, I'm doing this mixtape. I came down, you know what I mean? And I, we've been rocking together ever since. So um, first he did the Rolling Fifty Deep MCs with Fifty MCs. He called me up. He said, Yo, I got a beat. I need eight bars. That's all he said. He said, Bring some heat because your man's is on it. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's all he had to say. You know what I mean? So boom, dropped that one. Came real quick. A few days later, shot the video. Boom. A couple of months, that shit was out. Crazy. Everybody, yo, yo, I saw you. Yo, you killed that shit. Yo, this and that. Boom. Then he comes with the next joint, rolling 110 deep. Yo, I need eight more bars. This and that. I'm doing 110. All right, bet. Send it over. Boom, boom. Go in, do it, same thing. Boom, boom, chop, chop, come do the video, shout it out, it's done. Now, he's doing 200 deep. I heard about it. Rolling 200 deep, so it's gonna be 200 MCs. Uh, I already did my part, you know? <laughs> and I'm just, I, I just wanna see who he's, who he's coming up with. Uh. But inadvertently, I, um, Johnny Wah, who was a member of the Magnificent Seven crew out of Harlem back in the day, him and Ray Vaughn. Um, Johnny Wah gave me a call after seeing the Rolling 50 Deep. And he was like, yo, man, I saw you and Mel on that shit. Y'all niggas represented, you know what I mean? Y'all did your thing, you know what I mean? He said, but you know what? Y'all need to do one of them shits for us. And when he said us, I knew, I knew exactly what he meant, you know what I mean? Because I'm us. Exactly. I'm us. I'm I'm part of us. I get to peek over the fence every now and then, you know what I mean? But I'm still us. So I went and got 40, I mean, 50 old school MCs. Like, catch you not going, like, what? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, I got them niggas, right? <laughs> so um, I'm doing 50 OG MCs. Wow. And um, I got 49 recorded. <sighs> already so what do you think this is going to be releasing i'm looking i mean he's telling he's like yo put that shit out man put that shit out soon as possible right now but i want to shoot a video for it as well so i think in the next couple of weeks i'll be done with the recording uh, process gonna mix it then uh i shoot the video and i i want I, I i want everybody on the song in the video you know what i mean some people is in different places different you know so i got to figure that out but yeah, I want to get it done before the year is out. And maybe, uh, I don't know. I don't want to say when it's going to drop, but I just want to get it done before the year is out. But when it when it drops, there's going to be a lot of fanfare with it. And congratulations on your book too, Lyrics and Rhymes from the Legendary Grandmaster cast that just recently released as well. Oh, written. That's a re-release. Oh, that's a re-release. Okay. Yeah, the book, the book was originally released uh, after the Art of Rap movie. Okay. Um, uh, I wrote a rhyme for, I wrote a rhyme for them guys right there when they were filming me. They was like, yo, your handwriting is impeccable. <laughs> <laughs> so I see was like, yo, show them your rhyme books. They looked at my rhyme books. It was like, yo, that is a book. So they, you know, photocopied some of my rhyme books, some of my rhymes in my, in my books and made a book out of it. So the book is called written. And uh, the re-release was uh, just like last year, maybe a year before, uh, Wahida Clark uh, re-released it and did an audio version of it. So not only do I have the paperback, I got a hardback, and there's an audio version of it as well. I was hearing that you are, are working on your own autobiography. When do you expect this to will come together and eventually release to see for the hip-hop fans? Bef hopefully before I, <laughs> before I check out. <laughs> I've been trying to do this shit for the, for the longest, man. And, and uh, people don't know what it takes. <clears throat> they, they think that, 
you know, when you're in the public or when you're in the limelight somewhat or whatever, like, like that's like automatic. But that that shit ain't automatic. You know what I mean? You got to put in work. You got to be dedicated. You got to still be there. You got to be available and you got to be ready when you're shot, when it's your turn. You know what I mean? When your shot roll around, it might, it might never roll around, but if it do and you ain't ready, then that's a blown opportunity that might never come back to you. So I stay on my P's and Q's. You understand what I'm saying? Like I said, and I plant seeds throughout my career, throughout my life. Every relationship, I nurture those relationships. You know what I mean? I, I try not to piss nobody off. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, you could you might be jealous or, or envious, but you can't say I fucked you over. Nobody can say that. You know what I mean? So, cause I ain't the type of person I am. So uh like I said, I keep it moving and people people fuck with people that they can get along with. People that's easy to work with. You know what I mean? People that, you know, that are professional and business like when they do what they do and I try to be all that. So that's I guess part of the reason why I'm still around right now. And I guess that I could still put it down. Mm -hmm. And you can. Hush Hip Hop Tours, you are a tour guide. Has there been any young artists that you've seen on one of your tours? It could be from this day and age. Fucking Machine Gun Kelly, man. was Really? uh, Yeah, yeah. I was doing. I think I was doing a walking tour in Harlem, and and, and uh, they was got yo this guy man is he 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 can rap. He want to rap for you guys. And I think they taped it too, and he's like, I'm like yo, <laughs> and and now look, he's fucking Machine Gun Kelly, and this was before you know anybody knew who he was. So yeah, yeah, and uh, we had a thing where we let get people if they rap, you know, come on. It's, drop a few verses we put on the instrumental they rock out um there's been a, a lot of talented people that have been on the bus um in the last uh 18 19 years because that's how long we ran uh, from 2002 to to the present day the only thing stopped us was uh the pandemic yeah yeah and you do call it the pandemic <laughs> yeah facts oh uh, it's just an interesting time that we're in right now hopefully we get out of it soon and you know, getting into other things, the Kennedy centers, you're an ambassador for them. Yeah. I'm a member of the hip hop. Hip hop. Yeah. The hip hop council. Yeah. This is cool. It's cool being able to say that, man. You know, I mean, I mean, fucking hip hop has grown to, you know, (laughs) levels where, you know, I'm walking around the Kennedy Center like I lay it's all good. People come and greet me and everything. And it's like, you could do, I just did a residency there. Um, and, uh, we just had free reign, uh, you know, in, in, in the spot, they just gave us, it's just amazing, man. And Q-Tip is, you know, he is, uh, he's doing his thing, you know, over there, you know, with Simone Eccleston, you know, salute to Simone, you know, she, she holds everything down over there. And, um, I, I'm just glad to be a part of it. You know, the Kennedy center, um, the, the Bronx music heritage center. I'm on that. I'm on the board of, with them. <clears throat> of course, I'm on the board of the Windows of Hip Hop. Um, that's uh, myself and Grandmaster Melly Mel. You know, that's our community, you know, project that, that that we do. You know, we've been to the Grammys, the Bronx Zoo. You know what I mean? We support, you know, the, the councilwoman here in the Bronx. She's going to be our next borough president. You know, so we've been politically involved, uh, community involved, and educationally involved as well. We put a... a a studio, a recording studio in a in a school in the Bronx, CS55. Um, salute to uh, Principal Torres there, uh, with the help of uh, the borough president and uh, the councilwoman uh, Vanessa Gibson and uh, Bulova, the watch company, um, mm-hmm. who also you know helped out. So we're gonna have a studio in the school for the kids. So that's really dope. Wow, that's amazing, a hundred percent, and it's important for hip hop. I got to get into this. Did you ever think that hip hop would become the the genre that just can collaborate with any genre, basically all of them, especially country, because we would never, who would think that hip hop could collaborate with country and make hits? I did. You did? I, I listened to all kinds of music when I was coming out. And, and if wow. you listen to, I don't know, um, you probably could see it more <clears throat> in the Cold Crushes um, stuff. Mm-hmm because I was like the head writer, you know, for, for the group. And so a lot of our routines and, you know, we all were, you know, musical minded, musically minded. And uh, 
listen to various music. So our influences were different. Um, I don't think different, but I think we we referred to different influences than than the other groups did, and so uh, um, groups like uh, um, Simon and Garfunkel and you know um, the Eagles and you know Queen and shit like that. We 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 listened to that just as well as listening to Motown and listening to the Jackson Five and all that back in the day. So. Um, we were equally influenced. So you can hear that in the Cold Crush especially. But um, that's why, yeah, that's why that is a little twinge. And you can tell, you can tell that there's the different musical influences, um, not only in the, in, in the group, but in me personally. I, I do have to ask this. Are you in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? No, I'm not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I, I haven't been inducted into you haven't the been, Rock and you Roll Hall inducted. of Fame or anything. No, no, I have... Uh, I've, I've appeared, you know, I've, I've performed at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I've done presentations there. I, you know, um, did a promotional thing at, at, at a point. But uh, no, I'm not a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I, I just uh, did my show from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame yesterday <laughs> and the day before. And we'll probably be at the induction ceremony this year. But myself as an artist, no, I'm nah, not me. That's got to happen eventually. <laughs> I doubt it. I doubt it. Um, they pretty much based that on music, you know, on, you know, records. And I never had, you know, commercial success, you know, in records. I don't have a catalog that, you know, warrants a, a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction or a Grammy Hall of Fame or anything like that. I think my influence is a little different. Uh, maybe some, they'll, you know, name to award after me or some shit like that, you know, <laughs> somewhere <laughs> later on posthumously, you know what I mean? The Grandmaster Cast Lifetime Achievement Award, and, you know, for some shit like that. But no, I'm not, I'm not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And they have to definitely name an award after you. That's got to happen at some award show, the BET Awards, somewhere it's got to be mentioned. And it's important for all radio stations to embrace Grandmaster Kaz and then the pioneers of hip hop, especially the stations in New York that say where hip hop lives. But you know, you got to get back to. Uh, don't get don't get me started on that. <laughs> don't get you me gotta started give on that. Back. You got to give back and, and make sure that the youth know about the pioneers and the legends that came before the artists that we have here today. And one question to tie up the Sugar Hill Gang thing: MC Delight. Was this the first time that you went publicly on a record speaking about the situation? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. MC's Delight is the first time I did because <clears throat> um, what had happened was I was trying to see if I could get my royalties, if I could get my publishing on my writers from Rapper's Delight at some point. I call Hank. And we didn't, we don't speak, we didn't stay in touch, or we wasn't, you know, anything like that. But I did have his number. And I called him. And I said, listen, I have a lawyer that's willing to, you know, try to help me get this, get this bread. Would you be willing to come, you know, to court and just, just tell him, I, let, I gave you the rhymes. You know, just tell him you got, you know, and that's all I need you to say. Oh, I can't do that. What you mean you can't do that? It's the truth. I don't want you to perjure your. I don't say nothing against the Robinsons or none of that. Just, just say that, that I gave you the shit. I'm trying to get my bread. Oh, I can't do that. This and that, such and such. Fuck that. I don't know. So, when I got an opportunity to record again, that was still in my head. So I did MC's delight. Casanova's Revenge. And I really could have been nasty. <laughs> I can feel that if, in the track. You, you... If you know how I get down and what I'm capable of, I really could have been nasty. You know, but I tried to be, I tried to tell the story in a, in, in a way that was funny but poignant. You know what I mean? And try not to, you know, disrespect the whole Sugar Hill gang because they didn't have anything to do with it. No. They wrote their rhymes. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I mean? 
they didn't find out about Hank till later on. They was like, why this nigga keep saying the same shit? <laughs> why why he keeps saying the same? Then after a while, somebody had to write it, write whatever he you know did from there on, and then they got it. Oh shit, that's just got cast. And then of course coming to New York to perform and hearing booze and shit. It's like what the, what's that all about? Oh, that's cash shit. Yo, that's you know what I mean. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you know me, 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 G and Mike, we cool. We like this. You know what I mean. We yeah. uh, we didn't really have uh, fences to men. And Hank and I never got to, you know. Yeah. So I mean, it is what it is. But. Yeah. Who impresses you? in recent years as far as MCs go in hip hop? Because you got a lot of rappers out here now. Dave East is nice. Griselda, which is Benny the Butcher, Conway the Machine, and West Side Gun. Who are some MCs that you're listening to that really impresses you from the MC standpoint? I'm not listening to MCs. Okay. I get what you're saying. I know what you're saying there. Who are some, okay, who are some hip hop artists? Enough, I, I don't know enough. I don't know enough to tell you, to, to, to give you an opinion. Um, it's not that I don't listen to nobody or I don't like it's <clears throat> I do so much mm -hmm. right I really don't have time to keep up with other people's shit yeah so and if I miss it it's all right I miss it I mean if it's not consequential to me okay I'll find about out about it later or if somebody tells me or something like that, but I'm not, I don't listen to the radio. So I'm not really up no. on, on, on new artists like that. I'm mostly writing and stuff. So when I write, I don't listen to music. I don't listen to other because I don't want to be influenced directly by somebody else. So I'm really not up. Now, what I will tell you is that I heard that Dave East is nice. Um, Spenny the Butcher is nice. I heard that. Um, of course, you know the names that everybody knows. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm like a black thought type cat. You know what I mean? People that you don't listen to or hear a lot. Bumpy Knuckles. You know what I mean? Give me some Bumpy Knuckles shit. Right Freddie now. Fox. I mean, Freddie Fox, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, Kendrick. Class. Kendrick, you know what I mean? Checking for cats like that. Uh, J. Cole, you know, and Nas. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Nas is classic, so you know what I mean? 100%. But yeah, uh, a lot of the younger new artists, the baby and the little this one and that one, I'm, I'm not really up oh, on that. Yeah, I don't blame you. That's terrible. <laughs> Pop Smoke was the last cat that really caught my ear. And before him, Tory Lanez, mm. before he started shooting bitches. Yeah, <laughs> Tory could rap. That's the thing. I heard. I was surprised he could rap. I heard. I, and my son, I was in the car with my son for a while. And he was, he just, do, and I just had to listen. I was like, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I got into it a little something, something. So I mean, when I when, when people ask me, well, what do you think about the new? Year? I don't know enough. Mm. I don't know enough. I'm on the radio now, but I play classic hip hop. I play this shit from my era, from back in the day, even now. So <clears throat> only the news keeps me, you know, knowing the names and this and that, but the music itself, you know, I don't dance, I don't, I don't go out like, oh, you all dance with young people who be like, <laughs> <on that show." laughs> I'm 60 years old, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Could we get a Grandmaster Kaz album in 2022 or even the, the bottom of this year, perhaps, or at any time in the near future, would you ever consider dropping a new album? Because as you, as you said it before, and we've heard it on Rolling 100 Deep and Case Lays Records, can we get a new project from you of, of any sort? I don't know. I don't know if I should, you know what I mean? It's like your old gym teacher ain't supposed to rap, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Nah, but every time I do something, you know what I mean? Whether it be the rolling 50 deep or a live performance or whatever people see, that nigga still got smoke, yo. And, and, and it would be different if I was an older cat and I'm like, yeah, shit, sure, to the beach. <laughs> All right, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I've been past that shit a long time ago. So 
you know, I'm as current as I ever need to be. You know what I mean? I've never been one dimensional, so I can go pretty much anywhere, wherever the flow is at. You know what I mean? And um, I think if you are a true lyricist, that stands the test of time in any music, yeah. any music style or anything. You know what I mean? If you got something to say that people want to hear, you know what I mean? Every time you, you, you know, you spit, niggas be like, that nigga just drops a fire, then you can keep it moving. So you definitely going to hear Grandmaster Cass album. Um, not by, I don't think the years, uh, I don't, I won't have time to get it in while, um, this year, but 2022 for sure. Hopefully by my birthday in April. Oh, see, so are you a Taurus? I'm an Aries. Oh, you're an Aries. Okay. I'm a Taurus. I was born April 20th. Ah, you and my son. I was yeah. born April 18th. Oh, wow. That's yeah, close. So almost, almost, but, uh, yeah. you know. <laughs> Hip hop finally has a museum. How was it? We're, I'm, I'm assuming that you were there the day that that museum opened because you saw the, the the commotion and everyone there, LL Cool J, Fat Joe, everyone was there that day with the shovels. No, I wasn't there. Okay. And um, I don't really want to get into that, you know, too much, but I'm just, I'm not a part of that. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? So I'm not a part of that. We'll keep it at that. <laughs> yeah. Grandmaster Kaz, is there anything else that you love to promote on the show here today? Anything else that you have coming up? Anything? Well, of course, I mean, we already said I'm on Rock the Bells Radio every right. day, Monday through Friday. The show is called That's the Joint with Kaz and Shaw Rock. And basically, we, you know, we run down, you know, whatever's historical in hip hop for the day, you know, birthday shout outs, salutes. We talk about hip hop, of course, on the, on the ground roots level. Yeah, I mean, we talk about hip hop where motherfucking Grandmaster Flash called me up the next day. was like, yo, t really? This, this, and that, and such, such, such. You know what I mean? I had to make the correction on the air the next day. So that's the type of shit that we, you know, I'm trying to do positive hip hop, classic hip hop, the story and history of hip hop from two of its pioneers. Um, so that's what's up. Um, the, the, the Hush Tours that we've been doing, um, we haven't gotten back to Hush Tours yet. You know, we still, you know, in the midst of the pandemic or the, or the third stage of the experiment that they're trying to do. So um, we, we got to see what happens. You know, we can't get people on a bus. No. that many people on a bus nowadays, you know what I mean? Um, but when we, you know, we will be here when things clear up. You know, a lot of businesses just died totally. We just down until shit open back up. When it open up, we open up. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I got creative over over the pandemic. I, um, I got a couple of merch companies and started a couple of companies did you know got some new merch out there uh, one is um gmce dot very ink dot com okay that's my t-shirts my hats and uh i got some lady stuff coming out you know under that as well and also um i got like mugs and wine glasses and wine bags and type shit you know what i mean uh the site is called it's culture dot com um, icon flowers and you'll see me and red alerts uh, merchandise on that site as well so i'm just trying to keep it moving keep planting seeds um have income streams coming in from different places even when i'm asleep trying to get bread i'm making money when i'm sleeping yeah i mean and that's the goal that's the goal to get money when you ain't actually working you ain't got to be up working money should be working for you <clears throat> um if, if nobody figured that shit out during the pandemic pandemic then you know what I mean? You wasted the whole time that you was home by yourself. You got that right. Grandmaster Cass, I want to thank you for coming on the show here today. It's an honor. You're a true pioneer. I want to thank you for everything that you did for hip hop. Hey, Grandmaster Cass, I want to thank you. You are the grandest of them all. Keep doing great things for hip hop. I'm loving the radio show. I want to make sure that everyone's tuned in and what you got going here because it's time that we start tuning into the real hip hop. And that's what you do. Appreciate you, man. No doubt. I want you to enjoy the rest of your night. Take, take care. Make sure everyone listen and follow you on Instagram at the real Grandmaster Kaz and Twitter at Grandmaster Kaz. There it is. And you got it. Grandmaster Kaz, enjoy the rest of your night, man. I appreciate it. You too, Max. Yeah. Peace. Peace.